All right, let's jump into the color phase of the process. The first thing we got to do, and, and this is kind of almost, you know, before we start coloring it, is to deal with creating a set of um, flat kind of layers that we can use to um, help us kind of color these different sections, right? Um, and uh, again, I'll, I'll show you sort of what we're doing. Um, and, and explain that as we go. And uh, again, I'll sort of break down the first time we do it and the rest will just basically be repetition. All right, so I'm just gonna look at sort of cleaning up the file a little bit. I will still keep maybe, um, and, and I can use some of this sort of templated uh, stuff that I've got here, um, potentially. Um, I'll keep this little sort of sketch here for um for for later and i think as i was saying one of the things i'm going to do is crop this down so image crop all right and so we'll take it down and it'll kind of look like this um again we can always put a border on it if we if we like all right and that again is like the idea of kind of how that will sort of turn out um Um, what else? So we can probably get rid of that. And actually, I probably don't need any of those. Don't need, don't need that. Yeah, we can probably get rid of pretty much everything. So I've got a set of finished lines here. Um, um, yeah, let's delete that group and I'll show you the basic process that, that I use. So the goal here is that, you know, I, I have a bunch of lines on a, a layer, right? And we can look at the, the main character might be a good place to kind of start for this because it, it's sort of probably the most obvious reason why you would want it separated. And essentially what I want is I want just, again, a set of flat, um, a, like a, a flat block of color that goes underneath the lines all right and nowhere else now again there's a bunch of ways you can do this um and i'll probably have a sort of separate video that sort of explains that the general theory behind this and you know different ways you can do this again you don't have to do it this way but this is by far the fastest way what i've done is i basically have the lines and these are very clean right if they're sketchy i might put some levels on it right to clean it up and get rid of all the sketchiness because that'll help me with the flatting but I've basically got a clean line drawing on a white background. Now, for the purposes of selection, that's what Photoshop thinks I have, right? Because again, I've got sampling all layers on, and I've also got contiguous clicked. I have anti-alias unticked, because that means I'm not gonna deal with any, I'm only gonna deal with sort of very harsh, uh, bitmapped um, uh, sort of edges. I'm not gonna get soft edges, and I've got the tolerance set to about 10. Okay, so those are important. Sample all layers is on. And that means essentially, even though, right, I've got transparent lines, right, on, on a layer, Photoshop is just sort of treating whatever it sees as, um, you know, as a flat image, right? And then contiguous is on. And that means, again, if, for instance, I just sort of click um, on the white, what I'm going to do is, is click on the white there and... Um, what I'm doing is I'm going into Quick Mask by pressing Q. And Quick Mask just shows us what is selected and what is not selected. So there's a couple of other areas that I want to hit. So I hold down Shift and I'm going to sort of touch those areas. And these are just areas where, again, I'm, I'm going to have sort of transparency, right? If I go into press Q, go into Quick Mask again, you can see there's a couple of other areas there. So Shift, click with the wand. Let's go Q again in Quick Mask. Um, and again, you know, I'm not sure whether I want all of those sort of areas to be free, but here's a few more, all right? We can zoom up, click there, click there, click there. Yeah, and that's, again, clean lines make this very, very easy. 
Now we can always edit this later, but that's basically where I want to start. Okay, so I basically just clicked on all of the, the white areas that I want to be sort of transparent. I go into Quick Mask. And now what I can do is basically paint in where I want selections, right? So if I paint a bunch of stuff here, go Q to go out of Quick Mask, you can see it's sort of selected or it's actually unselected that area, right? Um, so what I can do, because one of the things we'll notice is that it's actually selected the lines because I've, again, I've selected the white. And so it's actually selecting all the white and none of the, the lines. So these lines are actually, they're sort of unselected, although we can invert that and make them selected as we go, right? So again, it, it's all, whether something's selected or unselected, it doesn't, doesn't really matter, right? Because we can always change that via Photoshop by just inverting the mask, right? Just go like that, control I inverts. Um, the other thing, uh, the other tool I'll use besides um, the brush, which is not a brush, it's actually a pencil, right? And again, as I was saying, we've, we've got this sort of thing where um, I'm using the pencil tool, not the brush tool. So shift B will, will cycle between different brushes. Here I've actually got it to just cycle between brush and pencil because those are the only ones I use. Um, and then I can paint with the pencil. And the pencil just sort of gives me these very harsh, right? It's sort of black and white, essentially. It's like we either have color or we don't have color. Um, as opposed to, again, if I shift B and I go, this is the pencil I was sort of drawing with, you can see I've got this softness, right? Um, so pencil, again, shift B gets me to pencil and I've just got a round brush with pencil. And this means what I'm gonna get is a super clean, super accurate selection. And it also means I can then fill, again, so I hit um, G for um, paint bucket. Again, G is either gradient or shift G. We'll swap between gradient and paint bucket. And again, I can sort of click there. Now I've got, again, contiguous is still on, anti-aliasing is off, and um, I'm not sort of dealing with all layers. So now I can just go through and what I'm going to do is sort of join up these areas, right? Because what contiguous does is it kind of like searches for the boundaries of, right? It's sort of, you know, you can see here, right? If if I click here, right? Oh, it's, it's going to make everything red because what contiguous is doing is it's kind of saying, okay, you want this thing selected. Let me kind of find the boundaries of that thing and I'll make all of that you know, I'll, I'll fill whatever you want. Fill fill all of that area with whatever you've got in the paint bucket tool. Um, so again, you see, I close that up and now it'll fill. The same thing here. There's no sort of, there's nothing sort of stopping it escaping. So you can see here again, right? I With a paint bucket tool, I fill. And because there's that little gap there, right? It's, it's not going to create a nice little selection. But if I fill that, it will. So this is, this is the task. This is the only remaining mundane task that we do um, as opposed to potentially having to paint in all of the, um, right, all of those things. So you could easily just kind of paint in this mask by hand, but it wouldn't be um, quite as accurate. Now, there's a couple of things that I do, right, um, and... Um, the, the, the main thing I'm doing is um, I'm going to use an action, right? And the action goes like this. Um, I press shift and F4, and it's going to do a bunch of stuff for me. So it's making a a copy of, of these lines, all right, that I'm going to drag up here. So it's, I've got a copy of them in case I need it. I'm going to make control G a group there, right? And I'll call that lines. Right, and I'll hide that because I don't actually need that. But I am going to keep a copy of, um, right, of these lines sort of separated, right. So in case I, in case I need it, right, I've I've got the the forest girl lines there, right. So they're still there. All right, but what I sort of end up with is this. So again, that was sort of set to black, but. Um, I kind of end up uh, with with this after I sort of run that action. And it's doing a few things behind the scenes. Um, you can see I, it's also, um, right, I, I probably forgot to close up this gap. So I can press the question mark forward slash key, um, which will unlock the transparency of the layer. And I can just simply fill that in. 
make that edit and I'll press that key again. All right, question mark forward slash key. Um, and that will lock transparency. So what this means is now I can kind of, you know, paint on here with whatever color I want and it's not going to go outside the boundaries, right? Because I've basically just got a, a good selection. I've got a flat version of these colors underneath, underneath there. And that also just sort of, you know, um, I've also got a single simple set of these lines, right? With a sepia sort of color adjustment where it's kind of just adjusting the colors a bit, right? And that is now clipped automatically as part of the layer sort of automation sequence that I had. Um, again, that's sort of just clipped down there. So there you go. That's that's basically what's happening. Now, now what is actually happening? Let, let's look at that a little bit better. Here I've got the foreground leaves, and let's try that process again. Right, I'm going to select the uh, white, and let's see what that gets us. I can see a few areas there that might I might want to kind of poke through. Right. So I press Q, that gets me to quick mask. And again, what I can do is go through and um, even though this is inverted, right, i.e. I've selected the white, the red is telling me what is not selected, right, what is masked out. That doesn't matter. I can close those. There's one. And hopefully, if I've done anything right, here I've got these things. So there's a couple of a couple of things that are, that are going on here, right, if we look at that action. Let's look at sort of what it does. Um, here, here we have Shift F4, right? So we're inversing the selection. We're contracting by two pixels. We're doing a smooth of 10, right? We're shifting the edge 10%, right? Um, and uh, yeah, doing a few things like that, right? So again, what I'm going to do is I'm going to exit out a quick mask, and this gives me the selection. All right, and now I'm going to go select tool, modify, contract, right? Actually, I need to invert first. So I'm going to invert, All right? So now, uh, let's do select, there we go, that's it. I think I forget what that um, shortcut is because I don't do it that much. Um, so there you can see that's actually what's selected now. Um, so now I'm going to go select, modify, and I'm basically going to shrink that selection or contract it by two pixels, right? And one of the important things there is that I'm going to say modify, contract. I have apply effect to canvas bounds unchecked. If I click it, right, it's going to shrink it at the edge of the canvas, but I don't want that. So I've undid that, modify, contract, two pixels, let's uncheck that, right, bang, and then it sort of does, it, it, it keeps the, the, the selection stuck at the canvas bounds, which is very, very handy. All right, so now I've got um, select, and now we go into select and mask. This changes all the time, they always sort of fiddle around with this, right? Um, Let's sort of look at this. And now we can go up here and see what we've got selected. So I've sort of shrunk that selection in a bit. Um, now what I'm going to do is sort of smooth it again by 10, I think is what I sort of had. But you can play around with this. And you can see what that's doing is sort of, again, it's softening it. You can see it sort of softened that up. And I'm going to shift the edge by minus 10. Right? And you can see, again, if I sort of move the edge that way, plus 30. See if it's going to sort of do something, right? It sort of shifts it in, shifts it out, shifts it in, shifts it out. And so what I want to do is, again, just shift it in a little bit, right? Again, you could probably do it a fair bit. But yeah, I just want it to be Somewhere there, right? And again, that's just sort of tucking it in there a little bit. Um, yeah, that's like pretty good. And so that's doing a pretty good job of just sort of selecting right just inside there, okay? And 
again, what I'm doing on this next is is essentially running a, a series of actions, um, and it, it does it does quite a few things. But the, the basics of it are that I am making a layer, and I, I can give you this action and sort of you know you can play around with it if you want. But with, with these things again, um, you, you do need to understand how it works, otherwise it it can end badly, <laughs> right? Um, but basically, yeah, what we're doing is we're making, we're, we're filling that selection with, right, with um, with a flat color. Right? So that's sort of what we're getting. And so that's that, again, that sort of flat layer, same as, as this one. All right, so that is now the same as this. And what I'm going to do next is, again, I could just clip these um, clip these lines to that layer, or I could just leave them floating above. Again, they don't need to be clipped, but if you do clip them, you can move these around on top of each other and, again, um, you, um, meet the brief criteria that often comes up that, you know, everyone wants everything on separate layers. Um, so, again, but the other thing we can do is uh, play around with... Um, let me just... I'll put... I'll put these in that lines, so we've sort of got it. And again, it's it's better if you sort of ha if, if you want to run a color adjustment on lines, it's better that they are actually flattened down. So you can see this is sort of flattened down onto a um, right onto its own sort of layer. You will find that if you run color adjustment, it works better on, it works better on sort of a single flat image. Now, again, I don't actually have to merge them down because, um, you know, that's, that's often not how, you know, Photoshop works. Photoshop can just pretend they're sort of still there. Um, what I have to do is just, um, Put a color adjustment layer on top, right? So if I do this again, Photoshop is just going to sort of imagine that whatever's underneath here is flattened, right? And I can sort of say do do a basic color adjustment, right? And let's say I'm going to use selective color as an adjust as a set of adjustment layers, right? And then we can sort of say let's make let's make the lines kind of quite red or sort of like orange and then let's make the whites sort of even more yellow right so any anything and this is why it's important to have it on separate sort of layers because uh, important not to have the lines on sort of separate layers. It's important to treat them as if they're flat because now it's again taking those like little pixels that are kind of just very faint. And because I'm adjusting the whites and the selective color, it's going to make them really, really sort of saturated in yellow. Now I can take the blacks and I'll sort of push a bit of sort of dark sort of blue in there, right? And that sort of gives me that sort of crunchy, crunchy look, right? You can color adjust these however you want. You know, you can make them purple or blue or whatever. There's an infinite amount of sort of control you can have there. Um, and again, what you could do is you could sort of merge these down. Let me duplicate these lines. So I've sort of got this here if I need it. Um, but yeah, you could just sort of say, let's treat all these as flat, right? And I merge this down. And now I can... Right, set this to multiply, and then it will give me this effect. I clip it there, right, and I've got a very sort of similar thing to here. Now, what I do with this set of actions is just keep sort of adjusting and tweaking and adding contrast to these sets of lines, right? Because again, I'm sort of processing them and making them a bit cleaner. There's a bit, there's a few levels. Um, and that's like another set of adjustments, right? But this is basically the, the logic, right? Is, is you're sort of um, creating a set of um, sort of adjustments on top of the lines, um, contrast, color adjustments, whatever you want. Again, a lot of this will depend on your particular style, right? How you, how you like to do things. 
um, how you want it to look, right? And you could just kind of, ha again, treat this as like a simple flat image, right? Again, I've sort of got this as a simple flat image and I could go control L, I could run some levels on that, right? And again, I could make, right? Again, you can see the, you can see that this sort of version of them that I've got has quite dark darks, right? So I can kind of, again, you know, make that a little bit lighter. Again, if I undo that, right, you can see it's kind of increasing the contrast, bang. And now if I kind of clip them, right, they're, they're going to have that sort of same sort of look as I've got there. So that's really all that I'm doing, um, except that I'm sort of doing it with an action. And again, I have, um, uh, where are we? Yeah. These ones? Yeah, these ones. So again, it's just a, a, an action, right, that would be add sepia lines. Okay, and so I just have the lines selected. And what that does is it runs a bunch of sort of layer adjustments and it puts them in a group, right? And that just gives me the same look all the time. And that's the same one I use for basically everything because I can't be bothered to change it. Um, but the point here is, uh, again, I don't actually have to, you know, I, I, I don't actually have to um, delete those or merge any of that those things, right? And then I can still kind of draw right on that sort of lines layer because that's all I'm doing. I've just got a, I've got the same sort of lines that I had before, except they've just got these color adjustments on top of them in a layer stack. But again, I'll have a little video that sort of explains the technicalities of that, um, you know, separately so that, um, you know, you can know where it is if you do want to follow along. But that's basically what's happening. And all I'm going to do is just repeat that <laughs> a whole bunch of times, right? Um, and again, part of what this action does is it just takes that group of layers, right? Again, it takes a duplicate of them and then it sort of um, merges, merges one of them, right? And then it sort of clips that one to the set of flats, all right? And then I, I'm left with, again, this one, which I just drag up into that lines layer, right? And then let's make sure I've got all of those things. Um, I'll check that. I'll check that later before we go forward. Um, cause again, I don't want to be like searching through layers cause I may well have deleted something or done something silly by swapping all those layers around. I'll check that out before we sort of move forward. Um, but that's the basic idea. I'm just going to do that to all of those separate elements. And that's going to give me the ability to just sort of with one click, say all these leaves are this color. And I never, ever, ever have to redefine this edge ever again. I sort of did it once when I drew it and it was very easy for me to then find it again. Cause I did it once with the selections. And then that allows me to, again, um, use that for all sorts of things that will um, it will become very, very handy once we get into the coloring. But that's the first step. Separate everything onto layers. So um, again, in the next, next video, I'll just keep doing that and roll through the process. But I wanted to break this down a little bit and sort of explain sort of what's happening here um, as we move through. So anyway, catch you in the next video.